Ronan swung his sword with all his strength, delivering a powerful blow to the ogre. He ordered Asel and Maria to leave quickly. Sita climbed off Ronan's shoulder and joined Asel and Maria. As the three of them watched the scene in astonishment, Maria agreed and responded promptly. Without hesitating for a second, the three of them ran out of the area and moved towards Braum. The two-headed ogre, now crouched on the ground, stared intensely at Ronan with a murderous look. Seeing this, Ronan gazed back into the ogre's eyes, clenching his teeth tightly. Upon closer inspection, he noticed that the two-headed ogre had magical circles in its eyes. Ronan was certain that these magical circles were the same ones that had controlled the giant before. He tightened his grip on the sword handle and couldn't help but get angry as he realized Nebula Clasia was behind all of this. The two-headed ogre attacked Ronan with all its strength, but he quickly gained momentum and jumped, dodging the blow and causing its hand to hit the ground and shatter into pieces. Seeing that Ronan had evaded the attack, the ogre grew furious. The force of its strike shattered the ground into small pieces, sending stones shooting up into the sky. Ronan took advantage of this, gaining momentum on one of the stones and quickly advancing towards the ogre. As he approached, he unsheathed his sword, clenched his teeth tightly, and gave the ogre a murderous look, preparing to attack. Ronan enveloped his sword with mana and swung it forcefully, delivering a powerful blow to the ogre's chest. As the ogre roared in pain, he seized the opportunity and launched a series of rapid cuts, creating a smokescreen around them. While airborne, Ronan stared at the ogre with a murderous look. As the smokescreen dissipated, it became clear that despite Ronan's attacks, the ogre remained unscathed. The two-headed ogre clenched its teeth and stared at Ronan with a murderous look. Realizing that the ogre hadn't suffered any damage, Ronan quickly concluded that its resistance was as formidable as ever. As it stared intently at Ronan, its eyes began to glow, and it swiftly approached him. In the blink of an eye, it reached Ronan, taking advantage of his airborne position to prepare its fists for an attack. Fortunately, Ronan turned his head just in time to see the impending strike. Thanks to his quick reaction, he blocked the punch with his sword. He stared at the ogre, clenching his teeth and wondering what was happening. Despite blocking the attack, the difference in strength sent his body flying backward. Within seconds, Ronan was propelled into some trees. Quickly, he tightly gripped the sword handle and aimed it toward the ground. Wrapping the sword with mana, Ronan forcefully plunged it into the earth. Gradually, he managed to halt his momentum, leaving a trail along the way. As he held onto the sword, he trembled, realizing that the ogre's brutal force remained unchanged. While Ronan was lost in thought, the ogre uprooted a tree with its massive hand. One of its heads fixed a murderous gaze on Ronan as it grasped the trunk with one hand and an orc with the other, preparing to attack. Using all its strength, the ogre hurled both the tree trunk and the orc toward Ronan, watching as they rapidly closed the distance. He remained motionless, his head lowered as he stared blankly at the ground, blood trickling from his mouth. Despite the pain, he spoke with a resigned tone, saying that ordinarily, he would have relished the chance to finish a fight he had started. Then, lifting his gaze to meet the ogre's eyes, Ronan told it that it had crossed a line that should never have been crossed. It had dared to harm Ronan's comrade right before his eyes. As Brown slumped against the tree, Maria rushed to his side. She gently rested one hand on his shoulder and the other on his chest, her face etched with worry as she asked if he was all right. Asel hurried over and knelt beside Braum. Cradling Sita in her hands, she reassured him not to worry. Sita's magic soon took effect, and a glowing magical circle appeared as she healed Braum. Meanwhile, Ronan wiped the blood from his mouth and fixed the ogre with a fierce, contemptuous glare, muttering, you son of a bitch. After making the remark, Ronan unsheathed his sword as the tree trunk hurled toward him. He lifted his sword high, slicing through the trunk just before it could collide with him. As the two halves of the tree fell to the ground, Ronan's gaze remained fixed on the ogre through the now clear gap. Ronan propelled himself through the gap, placing his foot on the fallen trunk for extra leverage. He leaped into the air, using the branches of nearby trees to navigate and close the distance with the ogre. As he advanced, his eyes locked onto the beast with a deadly, focused glare. In moments, Ronan arrived before the two-headed ogre, 
the creature lifted its head and roared upon spotting him. As Ronan descended, he took an offensive stance, ready to strike. Sensing the impending threat, the ogre extended its hand, intent on finishing Ronan off before he could launch his attack. As Ronan locked eyes with the ogre, he recalled that in his past life, he had been unable to defeat it because he lacked the means to pierce its thick hide and deliver a fatal blow. Now, gripping the sword handle tightly with both hands, he prepared to strike, confident that things had changed. As Ronan fixed a murderous gaze on the ogre, he took an offensive stance and began mimicking the attack techniques taught by his instructor. With the sword in hand and the techniques he had mastered, he believed things would be different this time. Extending his other hand backward, he prepared to unleash the fourth form of the Navarro style. As Ronan closed in, the ogre let out a fierce roar and charged toward him, eager to strike. Undeterred, Ronan advanced with resolve. He activated his spinning sword technique, making his blade whirl rapidly. Determined to pierce the ogre's tough hide, he aimed to strike before the creature could launch its attack. In an instant, Ronan struck and reappeared behind the ogre, leaving it momentarily stunned. A few seconds later, he landed on the ground and sheathed his sword. As he began to distance himself from the ogre, he called out, asking it to surrender. Confused, the ogre turned its head back, trying to understand what Ronan was implying. With a cold, murderous gaze, Ronan glanced down at the ground and commanded the ogre to die. Instantly, the two-headed ogre's body was sliced into pieces. As the severed chunks began to fall, Ronan remained motionless. The ogre's dismembered remains hit the ground, sending up a thick cloud of smoke. As the smoke began to clear, Ronan sheathed his sword, reflecting on how much further he still had to go. Turning his back on the ogre's lifeless body, he gripped the sword handle with one hand and rested the other on his belt. As he walked away, he couldn't shake the feeling that it had taken him far too long to take down this foe. Acel and the others arrived, with Maria carrying Braum on her back. They heard Ronan's voice as he approached them and asked if Braum was all right. Maria reassured him, saying that Sita had completed the emergency treatment. She added that while Braum still needed to see a professional, there were no major issues at the moment. Ronan approached Maria and seeing that Braum was alive, let out a sigh of relief. He then turned and started walking toward the temple, instructing them to continue caring for Braum. Acel, puzzled, asked what his plan was. With a serious expression, Ronan fixed his gaze on the direction of the temple and replied that he was going to confront Sarante. Several minutes later, Ronan reached the temple, now reduced to ruins. His expression shifted to one of shock and confusion as he surveyed the devastation. Staring at the wreckage of the temple's entrance, he called out loudly, demanding to know what had transpired. As Ronan surveyed the ruins, he struggled to understand what could have happened so quickly since his departure. Lost in thought, he was jolted from his contemplation by the sight of Sarante, visibly injured and clutching his wound as he slowly made his way towards Ronan. Shocked by Sarante's condition, Ronan turned to face him, his surprise evident. Sarante was gravely injured, with deep scratches covering his body and one of his arms missing. As he clutched his wound and staggered toward Ronan, he managed to meet Ronan's gaze and smile, a flicker of relief crossing his face at the sight of his survival. Slowly, his remaining strength dwindled and he began to collapse to the ground. He apologized to Ronan for not coming to his aid. Ronan hurried over, incredulous, and asked who he could possibly save in his current condition. As he reached Sarante, he placed both hands on his shoulders and locking eyes with him, demanded to know what had happened. Sarante turned his gaze toward Ronan and though weak, reassured him not to worry about him, insisting he was fine. He urged Ronan to leave immediately, his expression grave. He explained that they had managed to end things today, but warned that the danger could return at any moment. Before he could say more, a sword suddenly pierced his chest, leaving Ronan in stunned disbelief. Overwhelmed by the pain, Sarante began coughing up blood, with droplets slowly landing on Ronan's face. Ronan was left in shock, bewildered by the unfolding events. Ronan was stunned as he looked down at Sarante in a terrible state. He raised his right hand, but his body was frozen in shock. With a trembling hand, 
he reached out towards Sarante. Sarante turned slightly away and began to cough up blood. Ronan clenched his teeth, his gaze fixed on Sarante. Suddenly, a purple light materialized behind him. Brigia landed on the ground, holding her sword in her right hand. Ronan, surprised by her presence, turned his head slightly in her direction. As Brigia composed herself, she remarked with an ominous smile that Sarante had almost had her for a second. No way to treat an old companion, she said, reflecting on her previous encounter with Sarante. She acknowledged his quick thinking in using a dangerous skill to avoid her attack, which had resulted in his right arm being blown off. Sarante, clenching his teeth as blood trickled from his mouth, stared sternly at Brigia. He knew that if he hadn't used that dangerous attack, he would surely be dead. Brigia raised her right hand, purple mana radiating from her body like a protective barrier. She remarked that it was fortunate she had the blessing of the stars. Turning to face Ronan, she smiled and noted that she hadn't expected to see him again. Brigia was impressed to learn that Ronan had defeated the twin-headed ogre. Ronan turned his head slightly to the left, his left eye locked onto the elf. His jaw tightened, veins bulging as he gritted his teeth. Who are you? he demanded. The elf smirked, her sword resting in her right hand. She patted her head with her left, amusement dancing in her eyes. You haven't seen me in this form before, Ronan, she replied, her voice laced with condescension. Let me reintroduce myself. Ronan's expression shifted from hatred to shock as he watched Brigia transform, her black hair turning half blonde. She winked at him and, with an innocent smile, mockingly thanked him for rescuing her. Ronan stood protectively in front of the fallen Sarante, locking eyes with the elf, struggling to comprehend the situation. The elf, standing opposite him with a sword in her right hand, continued to smile. Ronan, bewildered, asked if she was the same elf who had been tied to the tree by the ogre. The elf confirmed, revealing that she had only been pretending to be a prisoner in the orc camp. With a grin etched on her face, Brigia remarked that she couldn't have crossed the protective barrier without Ronan's help. She then promised to make his death as painless as possible. As she smiled menacingly, a purple aura emanated from her body, reaching Ronan and Sarante, leaving them both surprised. Sarante dropped his head in defeat, while Ronan stood in surprise, Sita resting on his shoulder. Brigia unleashed purple-black whips targeting Ronan and Sarante. Ronan turned his head slightly to Sita, cursing, knowing the whips would hit them directly. A loud boom resonated through the air as the purple-black whips found their mark, causing large boulders to crack into smaller stones. As the dust and debris subsided, Brigia smiled, holding her sword. She was surprised to see the ground cracked from her attack, but no sign of Ronan and Sarante in the blast's center. She hadn't expected Ronan to dodge her strike. Turning her head to the left, she saw Ronan gently resting Sarante on a large rock. Brigia noted that Ronan was clearly no ordinary child. Ronan stood with his back to the elf, his gaze fixed on the unconscious Sarante. A grim expression darkened his features as he noted the severe blood loss and the absence of Sarante's left arm. Determined to save him at any cost, Ronan urgently called for Sita's help. Sita, perched on Ronan's shoulder, flew down to Sarante. Closing her eyes, she conjured a healing mana circle that hovered in the air before her. As the circle's light began to envelop Sarante, Ronan turned away from the scene and walked toward Brigia, his face shrouded in a dark, brooding shadow. Gritting his teeth, he muttered a curse, referring to her as a rat. These elf rats had first destroyed the dwarves' blacksmith and then infiltrated and spied on a duke's family. He unclipped his sword, Brigia watching him with a mocking smile. With a menacing aura, Ronan drew his blade, frustration etched deeply into his features. He demanded to know how they dared to show their faces here as well, identifying the group as Nebula Clasia. Brigia smiled, bringing two fingers to her lips as she observed the situation unfolding with interest. With her arms spread wide and a sword in her left hand, she noted that Ronan must have encountered her associates. She had recently heard about someone targeting their followers while they were away on missions and had wondered if it was Ronan. However, before she could pose her question, she was caught off guard by Ronan's sudden attack. Ronan swung his sword at the elf, but she nimbly evaded the strike. With a curious glance, she questioned Ronan's identity. 
Ronan was taken aback by how effortlessly the elf dodged his attack. As she distanced herself from him, she noted that it was unusual to encounter someone so swift at his age. She realized that it was no wonder the Nebula Clasia followers had struggled against him. Ronan jumped back a few steps after missing his target, but Brigia was quickly on him, raising her sword to strike. She remarked that Ronan had piqued her curiosity, expressing a desire to see if he had more surprises in store. As she launched her attack, Ronan blocked the blow, preparing for what was to come. Ronan gritted his teeth as he parried the elf's strike, astonished by how she seemed to anticipate his every move. Despite her skill, he noticed a gap in her defense, an opportunity for him to counterattack. As Ronan lunged forward to strike, Brigia smiled and closed the distance between them. They both unleashed their attacks simultaneously, and a powerful blast resonated around them. Despite the explosion, Ronan and the elf continued their fierce duel. Ronan, gritting his teeth, was taken aback by the elf's formidable strength as he parried her relentless blows. Ronan and Brigia locked eyes, their faces inches apart as they clashed. The elf laughed, declaring that she was beginning to like Ronan. As their battle raged on, she observed that it would be a shame to kill him at this point. With a playful smirk, she asked if he might be interested in joining their order. Brigia promised to treat Ronan well if he agreed to join the order. As he continued to fend off her attacks, Ronan, confused, asked what she was referring to. With a menacing glare, the elf warned him that he had no choice. She flicked her fingers, sending dark purple whips lashing out to pierce Sarante's legs, causing him intense pain. Sarante awoke from unconsciousness, gritting his teeth in pain as blood poured from his knees. Brigia coldly stated that if Ronan refused to join the order, she would kill Sarante first and ensure his suffering. Ronan's eyes widened and his expression darkened ominously. With the little energy he had left, Sarante urged Ronan to run, insisting he would be fine. Ronan's right hand trembled as he parried another attack from the elf. With a menacing expression, the elf gave Ronan an ultimatum, declaring that Sarante's life was in his hands and the choice was his to make. Ronan's eyes were hidden by the strands of his hair as he responded, vowing to cut the elf into little pieces. He launched a fierce attack, forcing Brigia to retreat several steps. With her sword in her left hand and her right hand bracing against the ground to stop her from being pushed back further, she smiled and remarked that it was unfortunate Ronan hadn't accepted her proposal. Brigia lunged at Ronan, a playful smile on her face, saying that his defiance only made her desire him more. Ronan gritted his teeth and advanced as well, their swords clashing with a metallic ring as they danced left and right, then left again. Their fight was intense, each dodging and attacking, trying to find the other's weak spot. Sarante regained consciousness and observed Ronan's battle with the elf. His legs twitched in pain, and he silently hoped that Ronan would flee. Brigia smiled as she locked eyes with Ronan, feeling a thrill she hadn't experienced in a long time. Ronan's eyes blazed as he swung his sword at her, but she caught his hand, holding it firmly. The elf remarked that she couldn't kill him. It would be a waste of his talents. Brigia, still gripping Ronan's hand firmly, commanded him to stay still. Ronan was shocked that she had halted his attack while suspended in midair. With a deadly stare, the elf warned that if he moved a muscle, her next strike could be fatal. She plunged her sword into Ronan's chest, causing blood to spill out. Ronan gritted his teeth in pain. Brigia pulled her sword back, preparing for her next strike. With a menacing stare, she declared that when Ronan opened his eyes again, he would be greeted by the starlight.